Okay, guys, I cannot stress this enough. Do not pay for a weekly or a monthly membership to anything that is telling you about investing in sports cards. It is a complete and total scam. Before we get too far in, I just wanted to say, subscribe, subscribe. Just kidding. I just wanted to say thank you to everyone that has subscribed over the last like month and a half. I think we've gained over 100 people now, like 125. We're at 778, give or take a few. Right now, we're getting very, very close to 1,000, which was a huge goal of mine to hit by the end of the year. It may not happen, but we're definitely going to do it in 2023. I want to do more giveaways. I want to help you guys out. So I really appreciate all the feedback on the channel. I've had a lot of people tell me that they really like the videos. So uh, thanks again, guys. I appreciate it. And let's go ahead and jump on in. If you want to learn and grow in the sports card hobby or investing world or whatever you think this is, do your own homework. Do your research. Get on YouTube. Get on eBay. Go to card shows, talk to people, talk to vendors, talk to other collectors, find out what they're buying, find out about the products that are high end, low end, etc. But do not waste your money. You are throwing money away. You can find everything you need with free resources like YouTube, eBay, even Facebook sports card groups. You can learn a lot more than you might think. There are a lot of people out there that want you to think that sports cards can be an investment vehicle. And there are definitely cards that you can buy that are rare that will gain value over time. But the thing about sports cards that makes them different from real true investments is they are not tied to something that generates income. They don't have profit and loss statements. They're not going to send out quarterly dividends. They're not like the stock market at all. You're not going to buy these things and then have them steadily increase in value no matter what they are. There's no company to associate them with. They're completely independent. This is a collectible hobby and that's it. But again, there are things that you can buy that are rare that will gain value over time. You just have to know what you're looking for. And yes, you can make money in the short term by buying and flipping cards if you buy on the low end and sell on the high end of the market, but they're not like stocks. This is not an investment opportunity. I'm not sure how many of you are like me where you have an iPhone. You can open the stocks app in your iPhone any given day of any given week of any given month, and there are always two different viewpoints. There's the person who says the market is going up, and there's the person who says that the market is about to crash and burn. We have this all the time. And it's the same thing with sports cards. If you listen to someone who's giving you advice about how sports cards are only going to go up or this is the card to buy because the value is going to go here, it's a complete lie. Stop believing this stuff. Don't listen to it. Not to mention the lack of information and transparency that we actually have in the sports card hobby as far as values are concerned. I already did a video talking about whether or not alt values are reliable. We know that the sports card investor and the market movers app that he's been, you know, he started or whatever, we're not sure if those values are actually accurate. We don't know if we should go off of eBay sold listings and things that have, you know, sold most recently or over a six month window or whatever. Nobody's on the same page. It's kind of like the wild, wild west out here. Nobody really knows what's going on. So until we get some clarity and an easy, discernible way to find values for any given sports card and what the true value is right now at this time, it is nothing like the stock market at all. Now, I don't want this whole video to be a rant and I don't want to keep going on and on and make it seem like I'm just shouting about the things that I don't like about this hobby because I do truly love this hobby. But there are a couple more things that I want to talk about as well that I would not do with my money when it comes to investing in the sports card hobby. And one of those things is sealed wax. I know that there are people out there that seem to think that buying and holding sealed wax from the most recent era, let's just call it like the early 2000s to now, is a good idea because they're going to increase in value twofold, threefold, fivefold. I don't believe that that's true and I'm going to explain to you why. Now first we need to understand where the value for these sealed boxes actually truly comes from before we can explain why it's not a good investment. So the majority of value for these sealed boxes is the potential hit that is inside of the box. Usually the main hits are autographs or autograph redemption cards of some of the biggest and best players in the hobby. For example, if we were to look at the 2018-19 set of basketball, any of them, doesn't matter which one, but the main hit is going to be a redemption card for a Luka Doncic autograph preferably number, right? The lower the number, the better. Now, the thing with this is that a lot of those cards have already been pulled and have already been redeemed or in the process of being redeemed right now. Hopefully, they've been returned already since we're four years down the line from when he was a rookie. But that being said, 
if that's one of the main chase cards, what a lot of people I think fail to realize when pricing or valuing these boxes down the line is that those redemption cards have expiration dates. If you were to wait 10 years and then open that box of Panini one basketball, one in one basketball, let's just use that as an example. If you were to open that and you got a Luka Doncic rookie autograph redemption card, and let's just say it's a goal, let's say it's the 10. That would be amazing. You'd be super, super excited only to find out that that redemption expired back in 2020, 2021, 2022. You can't redeem it anymore. And there is a lot of uncertainty in the hobby right now with Fanatics potentially taking over. Are they going to acquire Panini? They did already acquire Tops. What's going to happen with those redemptions in the future? So if you're buying any sealed wax from the last 10 years or so, and you expect the value of those products, which is based solely on the value of those potential redemptions that are in there, to hold, I just don't agree with that. I can't get behind that. All right, like I said, I wanna stay as positive as I can during this video as well. So there are things that I think that you should buy, and there are two reasons why you should be buying sports cards, right? If you're someone like me, I buy them and also resell them to be able to buy more things that I enjoy collecting, but there's also the true collector, and those are the people that we need more of. The people who rip wax only for the fun of it, and they just enjoy it, and they like pulling cards of the team they collect. And the people that go out and hunt through value boxes, that look for things that are for their teams and their favorite players, and they're buying them just to hold on to, to collect for years. They don't care about the value. They don't care about these things increasing. They don't care what they, they just want cool looking cards, that they enjoy looking at and that they're happy to own. That's what it's all about. That is what the hobby is. Now, I am in no way, shape, or form trying to discourage anyone from A, ripping wax, B, buying cards that they think are gonna increase in value, or C, buying sealed product and setting them aside. If you wanna preserve the history of these boxes and hang on to them and then you know, 10, 15 years down the road be able to just sell them to another collector that thinks it's cool to have a sealed product, or if you wanna rip them open in the future. I have no problem with that. Um, I think that that's really fun. I actually enjoy right now buying products from back in like the early 2000s or mid 2000s once in a while just to rip and enjoy that. Um, you know, a 2005, six, seven football product that really doesn't have anything in there. I mean, there could be some Brady base cards. There might be a couple of Brady inserts. There's not really any good rookies from like that kind of time period. But, you know, I still think that's really fun to go back and rip those things open. And I like, you know, I enjoy doing that. It's a lot of fun to me. And also seeing the history of those sealed boxes. Like, let's say you're someone who wants to have a sealed box from every single year. I would think that that's really cool. Um, having a sealed box from 2000, which is Brady's rookie year, obviously going to be a little bit more expensive having a sealed box from 2001, 2002, 2003. I think that's a really cool idea. I think, you know, for me, I would rather do something like that as opposed to the people who build sets, like the set collectors who want, you know, the entire checklist, the one through 799. That's cool too. That's not really my thing, but I know there are a lot of guys out there and I've worked with some guys. Uh, there was actually a guy who just bought some cards from me on eBay and wanted me to check to see what other Bowman Chrome I had because he wants the base prospects and base vets to build the whole checklist. I'm fine with that. Uh, really anything that you want to do that's fun in this hobby, I think that's what it's all about truly. And uh, I don't think that every single thing that we talk about on YouTube and in the sports car world should be about investing, flipping, making money. And that's all it seems to be. It has been driving me crazy lately to get on YouTube and find the guys who were like, I just spent $10,000 at this show and $15,000 at this show. And if you're not investing in this, what are you doing? And the sports card market is tanking, tanking, tanking. Like who cares if you want to have fun and you want to buy sports cards and you can afford it, that's what you should be doing. And all this other noise doesn't matter. I go to sports card shows too all the time. You guys see that. I like putting that content on here so you guys can see what's happening at the show, what it's like to be a dealer, what it's like to be a customer, what the shows are like, what the traffic is like. I'm not trying to, to brag about good shows. I'm not trying to show you bad shows to say, hey, nobody's collecting anymore. It's like collecting is never gonna stop happening, but I'm so tired of seeing the guys who are just bragging about spending the crazy amounts of money. You know, I spend a couple hundred dollars per card on cards that I think are really cool that maybe I can make a little money on. Maybe I can put them in my collection. You know, maybe I can flip it from 250 bucks to 350 bucks and then take that extra $100 to buy something that I think is really cool. Like, 
I'm spending money at these shows too, but I do not want to be that guy who's like, I just spent $20,000 at this show and it was really cool because these are the cards I got. When you know that all those guys are doing is buying them, sending them to PSA, and then flipping them for an extra $1,000. Like, that's not really that cool to me. Like, it sounds cool and everyone likes making money. I get that. But I don't think that that's what this hobby is. I think there's a way to do both. I think there's a way to flip cards and make a little bit of money and have fun with what you're doing um, to be able to put cards into your own personal collection. But you don't have to be the guy that's just strictly in this for money and you're just trying to make a million dollars a year from flipping sports cards. Like I think that's a little bit ridiculous. That does lead me to one more thing that I wanted to talk about also. So I live just outside of Charlotte, North Carolina. There are a lot of card shows going on here all the time. We've also got about five or six different hobby shops. So I know a lot of you that are watching are kind of from around the country and even in a couple of other countries. So um, if there is anything that you want for your personal collection that you've been looking for and you want me to keep an eye out for it, I am more than happy to look for things for you guys at shows. So uh, if you want to reach out like via email or DM me on Instagram or something, uh, I've done this for a couple of buddies of mine in the past too where I know they may be a collector of a certain player. Uh, you know, my buddy Todd likes Cal Ripken and Derek Jeter and Bo Jackson, and there's a whole list of guys that he's always kind of looking for. So if I see something really cool while I'm traveling around and going to these different shows, you know, I'll just send him a, a text or a picture of it and say, hey, this is the price. This is what, um, you know, the card is. Looks really cool. Thought it might be something you want. He'll either give me a, a yes or a no if he likes it, and then I can negotiate price that way. So, you know, if you guys are looking for something and I find something really cool of that player, I'm happy to send you a picture of it. We can negotiate the price. You just pay for it and then just cover the shipping to you. I'm happy to send you those cards. Just kind of helps you as a collector to be able to open up your network as well and be able to find things that maybe aren't in your area. Uh, one thing that made me think of this is I just did another video of some pickups I did in Raleigh, North Carolina at a card show here. I picked up a really, really cool Wayne Gretzky game used jersey uh, card. Uh, that's a one of one. And so I'm in a Wayne Gretzky Facebook group as well and posted it in there. And there were just all kinds of people all over the world that were uh, were really uh, you know, happy with that card and, and really impressed by it and liked it. And I was just kind of showing it off. I wasn't selling it or anything, but um, just kind of showing it off. And so it just kind of made me think like if there's anything that you're looking for and you're a collector that's out of state and you want to see what we've got here at our shows, um, you know, I'm happy to take a look for you. So uh, just let me know. I'll be happy to do that stuff for you. I really enjoy that too. If there's something that you're hunting for, I'm not always going to find something obviously, but uh, I'm happy to, you know, kind of keep my eyes out for you just in case. Okay, everyone, that is my conclusion for today and why you should not be investing in sports cards or at least paying for subscriptions of sports card services, advice services. So uh, again, I'm going to throw some stuff up here on the screen. If you could please subscribe to the channel and like the other videos, drop a comment below. Let me know what you thought of this. Let me know who your favorite players and teams are too, and I'll keep an eye out for you guys. Thanks again, and I will catch you next time.